just uh, very good to, uh, good evening to you all so you are all welcome of you uh, on behalf of the vishwabharati library network so today is the day one on three day national level research academic skill development program so as you know in general we are organized such kind of special session throughout the month and today our honorable speaker dr jibesh bansal sir the name of the topic today is research and publication ethics contemporary issues so may i request our respected and honorable assistant library senior assistant librarian in charge rabindra bhavan library additional responsibility of the psb library to dr sahabad nosin ma'am to introduce with today's speaker madam please thank you kushinda uh thank you dr eljeshwan sir for uh, accepting our invitation so a brief introduction for dr jeshwan sir who is presently serving as deputy librarian at central library punjab university chandigarh he has more than 23 years of professional experience including 21 years of vast experience at punjab university He has served as a university librarian of Punjab University, Chandigarh, from April two thousand nineteen to June two thousand twenty-two. He did his MLIS and PGDCA from Kurukshetra University in nineteen ninety-eight and two thousand respectively. He was awarded PhD by Punjab University in two thousand thirteen for his doctoral research on information seeking behavior in electronic environment. His PhD thesis is published as a book from Author Press, New Delhi. Dr. Bansal has published more than forty papers in national and international journal, and he has hundred and eighty citation for his works. His area of interest are psychometrics, open access, IP application in libraries, and information seeking behavior. He has attended and presented paper in twelve international conference on psychometrics, psychometrics. At seventeen coordinate meeting held at Nancy, France, from twelve to fifteen December two thousand sixteen, he has contributed significantly in LIS conferences, workshop as paper presenter, invited speaker, as well as chairperson of technical session. He has served as resource person in various workshop training program in the field of library and information science. Sir, we welcome you in our library network. Please. Thank you, Dr. Nosheen. It is a pleasure for me to have a talk with Shanti Niketan. I am thankful to Dr. Nimichan Saha, Shanti Niketan. I am remembering Dr. Abhinder Nath Tagore today, who the family of which created the Shanti Niketan, Shanti Niketan University, and. it is a great great pleasure for me in fact i am attending i am delivering my talk first time to west bengal researchers or faculty members it is a really a pleasure for me and thanks thanks to uh, thanks for inviting me for invited talk to shanti niketan and the topic of my talk will be research and public publication ethics contemporary issues the this this is very common term these days research and publication ethics everyone is talking about academic integrity publication ethics research ethics after 75 year of independence of india we have a huge higher education system we have colleges in several thousands 40000 40 to 45000 colleges we have we have a Around one thousand universities, including private universities, deemed universities, etc., we have a huge network of colleges and universities, deemed universities, research institutes, and now we have a quantity. Where we are lacking, why we are not being considered among the hundred top ranking universities, or say some other developed country universities. where we are lacking in these is there certain aspects that we are lacking in some quality aspects in our research level in publication level we have a huge publications 
we have number of phd's are being enrolled in the various state universities central universities private universities still we are not considered as that powerful as the developed countries as we are not among the top 100 institutions ranked by various ranking agencies like qws ranking or times world ranking there is so there are certain aspects and what is what are ethics because everyone know this is not a term of this is a philosophical term ethics is a philosophical term this is not a term of library science this is not a term of statistics mathematics physics chemistry library science this is a ethics ethics is a very common term that moral principles and the moral principles that we should have the moral principles in the society in the family in the research institute everywhere we walk in there should be certain moral principle we should have if we don't have those moral principles then we are breaching then we are breaching it means certain boundaries certain which should not be your basically what is ethics ethics is your behavior if you will talk ethics are moral principles basically these are moral princi principles to distinguish between acceptable and unacceptable behavior this may be in the society this may be in the research this may be in the academics this may be in the higher higher level academics this may be in the lower level academics and west especially when we come to the research or higher level academics because pandit jawahar lal nehru also said that there is one statement of pandit jawahar lal nehru the first prime minister of india if the universities will discharge their duties if the universities will discharge their duties adequately this will be good with the nation and the society because we are on the helm of affairs where ias doctors engineers every type of products come to the society so this is very important that we should have ethics in research in publications at higher education level what is integrity the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles suppose if you have moral principles and by undesire you don't want to do, do any mistake and by chance some mistake happens and later on you realize that this mistake has happened and uh, this should not occur from my side this should not occur from my side you will feel guilty definitely in the society also in the family also suppose with your parents and if you feel that certain moral principles you have done breach of certain or you have crossed certain moral principles you breached so certain moral principles in a family society in research in academic institution later on you feel guilty that i should not do like that this is fault on my level so this is only when if you have some certain strong moral principles if you have ethics which such ethics involves the application of these ethical principles in the scientific research at the research level at the publication level that ethical standards you should adopt at the research level while you are pursuing your research while you are submitting your some manuscripts research manuscripts in some conference in some publications you should follow the moral principles of research or publication so that your findings may have adequate receiving by the society by the scientific community only if you have followed the, those principles of research and publication only then your scientific findings or research findings will be credited for will be credited by the society by the scientific society so i think you have come across the basic what what is our topic today we have topic that we should be we should have strong moral principles we should have responsible behavior we are not kid now 
at the research level uh, at the higher academics level we are not kids we are we will be punished if we will breach the principle moral principles of moral principles or we will if our behavior is not responsible in conducting the research in conducting the academics either you are a teacher either you are a faculty member or a professor or a research scholar if you will breach those principles then you may be punished it may be a small punishment it may it may be a big punishment according to the level you will do the breach of the moral principles this is the basic conception we are discussing today there in 2018 these there are certain principles they are given by the university you all know just what is ugc university grant commission that is governing our higher education institutions so this, they have framed certain guidelines on academic integrity and plagiarism and what they say what that these guidelines say academic integrity is the intellectual honesty is the intellectual honesty in proposing performing and reporting any activity which leads to the creation of intellectual property because after doing your phd work your thesis will be considered as an intellectual property uh, your research paper will be considered as an intellectual property if that property if that intellectual property will be used by your idea will be used by another researcher then you will be credited for that idea you will be credited for that idea so you have to use the intellectual honesty in proposing performing and reporting any activity which leads to the creation of intellectual property according there is committee on publication ethics this this is an international committee and what that committee says good research should be well adjusted well planned appropriately designed and ethically approved should be well adjusted well planned you have to do well planning but with this is my research design i go through the literature that this aspect has not been covered it should be appropriately designed this this will be my i will use this method this will be i will use questionnaire method this will be population of my study this will be my sampling method and and it should be ethically approved from all angles if there are certain humans human subjects are involved how i have to deal with the human subjects so they so that they don't feel hurted they can participate in your research if in medical sciences also in social sciences also you have to interact with certain human subjects also you have to use the intellectual property of the other persons as for coming to your research problem you should be well aware how i have to use that intellectual property i have to give credit to them otherwise you will be in trouble i have seen as a as a on a senior position in punjab university library how the pro persons came into problem when they breach the moral principles of research and this publication ethics to conduct research to a lower standard may constitute misconduct this is very much clear if you will not follow these principles you will do lower standards and this will be considered considered as research misconduct academic misconduct suppose let us as a, as a teacher if you will you will design a paper you you, you prepare a question paper then then also you should have certain moral principles that confidentiality of the question paper will be maintained if you will research tool of some another person in your research in your study then you have to give full credit that i am using the research tool of that 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 researcher that person this so all these things should be you should be well educated at this level that how i have to use the intellectual property created by the other persons how i have to deal with various research subjects so this all this is this is all about basic principles of research ethics honesty 
what is honesty you should be honest you should be honest in proposing your research design in what what will be the what 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 be, will be your design, research design what will be the oh, methods will be used by you what what is your hypothesis and changing your hypothesis later on you you should be very clear that these are my research questions these are my objectives this 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 these things will be my research design non discrimination trust fairness you should be fair even i will say to the supervisors faculty members you should be fair enough that researchers can trust on you suppose a teacher has four students under registered under him or her he should be fair to all that so that there should be mutual trust building among the among your students among the society if fair principles trust only comes in the society where there are fair principles if you will not follow the fair principles how you if your behavior will be discrimination you will do discrimination how the fair how trust will trust will come into the society you should be very objective what is my objective of research integrity we have discussed you should be very honest you should follow the principles of honesty carefulness you should be very careful in dealing with various human subjects in dealing with various intellectual properties in dealing in dealing you should be very careful openness sharing of ideas you should you should be very open that you, this is on this area i am working you can discuss it with several persons i you have gone through literature through various so that you have some a little contribution in the society because if you will see the universe of subjects universe of knowledge universe of knowledge is not a small thing our purpose when i started my phd i i discussed professor joshi was my teacher at kurukshetra university i discussed with him that i am starting my phd at punjab university he said to me jivesh your purpose is to add a mini 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 micro level nano level drop into the existing knowledge because knowledge is a very vast field universe of subject if you will see universe of knowledge it is very big you will see on the google how many pages how many knowledge you if you know certain abstracting services chemical abstract how may, how how the knowledge is how the knowledge is adding into the existing pool of knowledge in the in the whole world there are there is a lot of knowledge is producing day and night so our purpose is just to add a little drop into it by our honesty by our integrity by following the fair principles and by having principles of trust integrity carefulness etc respect for intellectual property you should we have discussed that you should respect the intellectual property created by the others you should have confidentiality you will deal with the human subjects if you will say that i am a researcher because sometimes individuals don't want to disclose certain private aspects of them suppose a doctor because if you will say that i am a researcher your information will be kept confidential suppose you start taking the interview as a social science researcher and you should ensure the subject you should ensure that person that you are i am using i will use your data only for research purpose full confidentiality of your information will be maintained only then he or she will open to you otherwise people hesitate to respond and until and unless you will you will not become friendly you will not ensure that you are a true researcher and your their information will be used provided data will be used only for the research purpose they will not give the correct information to you respect for colleagues mutual respect there should be we have discussed that you should have mutual respect trust with each other social responsibility you should follow the principles of social because man is a social animal if you are doing research it is for the benefit of the society suppose a doctor is doing so if a researcher is doing the ideas will be somewhere used into the 
society and we also say that that these recommendations will be will be benefited to the society in this way so you are a, you should have a, some social responsibility so your research is funded by some body like ugc aict mhrd or some other dst department of science and technology some state government some international agencies some getty foundation so there are several international agency unesco etc you should be you should be responsible you should you should have show the your responsibility these are the basic principles of research ethics important areas of in research ethics so there are certain areas that suppose we will talk about data fabrication falsification as a social science researcher or a science researcher if you will fabricate the data if you you have no suppose you are a social science researcher you have to take interview of 200 persons or collect data as a with a questionnaire from 200 persons and you don't go to to those population member to those subjects and you create the data data by just estimating this way suppose you just conduct survey of only 15 persons 50 persons out of 200 and rest you assume this will be the behavior the, generally people will because individuals are very complex subject individuals are no human is a very complex subject it is difficult to understand every human is a different definitely when you will contact you will find some another information so you should you, you don't have to fabricate the data or you you don't you don't you don't have to create your own data i will give one example to you i have stud i have done my phd on information seeking behavior in electronic environment when i have given some interview schedule to the to my to the subjects to the agriculture scientist it was the my research group was agriculture information seeking behavior of agriculture scientist in electronic environment so i put two questions to them do you have your own blog do you have your own website so after collecting the data i have contacted around 350 agriculture scientists only 3 to 4 scientists have blog because this this study was i have conducted in 2007 or 8 i have collected the data in 2007 or 8 only of i have covered 14 agriculture is icr indian council of agriculture research institutes after collecting the collecting the data i discussed with my supervisor that only 4 to 5 scientists have their own blog or their websites so should i miss this question into the analysis part what my guide suggested me jivesh you have done a survey research this is not your duty to create the website or the blog of the researchers of the agriculture scientists this is not your duty you have just to see their behavior in the electronic environment you can say that only a few few agriculture scientists only a few agriculture scientists have created their websites or blog and agriculture scientists have started showing their presence on the internet agriculture scientists have started showing their presence on the internet because you are doing what is you are many of you are social science researcher you have to analyze the present state of affairs in survey research what you have to do you have to analyze the present state of affairs so agriculture scientists have started showing their presence on the internet so you have whatever data whatever data you will find on the from from your researchers so sampling is very important suppose you have a large population you can't contact the whole population whole suppose you have 10000 population in your research you you can't contact the 10000 so you should be clearly known what sampling method you have to use how you have these, these are very these are very research design these are very important issues if you have not done your sampling you will not get the good results these are very you will say you have to give appropriate time 
and appropriate discussion on these aspects of research design and what tools, what sampling methods you have to use if you want to give some result to the society. Data falsification means the researcher did the experiment but then changed some of the data. Suppose fabrication is you have created all data. What is falsification? You have created, you have done the data, but you want to prove certain hypothesis. You want to prove certain hypothesis and from the collected data, that hypothesis is not proving. You suppose you are doing some firm in some firm, pharmaceutical company, you want to do. So if you will misappropriate the data, somewhere it will affect the society. It will give good bad results to the society. It, this, your research will give bad results and it will be harmful for the society. I will give one example to you in this regard. You very well know about the Amartya Sen. Amartya Sen is also, from, is also from West Bengal. He once come to India and Delhi government has contacted Professor Amartya Sen that they want to implement this policy into the in, in Delhi or some particular area, this policy they want to implement. So what Amartya Sen suggested to them, a researcher in Delhi University has published a paper on that, research paper on that, and you go through that paper. If the results of that paper are okay, you can implement that policy in the Delhi. So they have consulted that paper and the results are, are showing significant effect. Though they have, because Amartya Sen, Amartya, Amartya Sen is not a small figure. He is an Nobel laureate. Everyone knows Amartya Sen. So they have implemented that policy into the Delhi government and the results remain negative. They contacted to the Amartya Sen. You have said that, go to that paper. We have studied that paper and that paper was saying that you can, the results are okay. So, what Amartya Sen said to them, go to the Delhi University and catch that professor. He has fabricated the data. He has fabricated the data. So these types of things, because you can be any, any stage of life, you can be found guilty for doing your research misconduct at any level. I know as a, in, as a uh, in Punjab University that if, uh, we come across certain things in Punjab University that uh, at a later stage also you can be found guilty and you can be punished for your research or academic misconduct. Authorship, gift, ghost authorship. What is ghost authorship? You have not contributed anything into the paper and you have added your name by your influence. That is called as ghost authorship. You have not substituted. What, what authorship, auto authorship says that you, you should be author only in, in a paper when you have substantially contributed to that paper. If you have not substantially contributed to the research, to the project, you should not be part of that paper. You should not be part. If you are part of that paper by your influence, etc., then you will be considered as a ghost author. Gift authorship and guest authorship are when someone who does not qualify as an author is still given credit for being one. Oh, ghost authorship is when someone who substantially contributed. I have, I have explained to you gift authorship. You have not substantially con con contributed and you have given authorship. This is called as gift authorship. And ghost authorship have when you have substantially contributed to the research project and your supervisors, suppose you are doing PhD, you have conducted the research, you have collected the data, you helped him in analyzing the data, and while publishing the paper, your name is being left out. It means that is ghost authorship. That is ghost authorship. Ghost authorship is when someone who substantially contributed to a study is left out of the author list. This is ghost authorship. And we are, when you have not substantially qualified, you have added your name by your influence that is gift or guest authorship. Plagiarism is a very common term these days. Everyone knows plagiarism is the appropriation of another person's ideas. 
processes results or words without giving appropriate credit. Not only you have changed the language, you have used the idea of another person, then also your that work is also considered as plagiarized. Peer review. Peer review system is designed to ensure that only high quality peer review, you have a peer review or this is a review paper. This is a peer reviewed work means refereed work that this work has been checked by, reviewed by these, these experts on this minor subject only after review by those subjects. When they have find that this piece of research work is worth publishing, only your research work is published, is considered for research in a paper. Only if you, 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 your research project, your PhD work has been evaluated by two examiners, three examiners, after that, they have given the report that this is a, this PhD research work has a new contribution, some, something new has been added into this PhD work. Only then this PhD has been awarded or this paper has been published on the basis of certain new findings that that is called as peer reviewed. Peer reviewed means that has been reviewed by the experts on the area. Multiple submissions. What, what, is, what are multiple submissions? You will submit your one paper into multiple journals. Submit the same manuscript to more than one journal at the same time. Or doing this waste the time of the editors and viewers well and can damage the reputation of the authors and the journals they published is more than one journal as the later publication will have to be retracted. Basically, if you have submitted by changing some title work, etc., same, same work you have submitted by changing the language, etc., and you are doing the multiple submissions, that is called, called as multiple submissions. And sometimes it also occurs when you are not at mistake. I will again give you an example here. And that example is also related to West Bengal. There is one association of librarians, Indian Association of Indian Association of Special Libraries and Information Centers, and its headquarters is at Calcutta. I have once submitted one paper for publishing in the Isaac Bulletin. I contacted to them two to three times. Arjun Das Gupta was chief editor, and I have contacted him that, sir, I have submitted this manuscript. Finally, he said me, Jivesh, this manuscript we will only consider when you will make these changes, these changes, these changes, this and that. This is not up to our level. I think you should make me made these changes. Only then we will consider your manuscripts. I was fed up with this all, these things. I think whatever may be the reason, I think it is not up to their quality or quality level, etc. So I submitted my research uh, that manuscript into another some into some another journal decidoc journal of information for dr shah nimichan sai is here decidoc journal of information technology what i see that icely has considered that manuscript and published in the september 2014 or 15 after i have submitted the, this this in the, the my manuscript into the another journal Isaac has published that paper. I was, how they can do like that when they have said to me that I have, we have, we are not considering you are this, this piece of work is not, you have to make these changes. And later on that they have published that work. What I have to do, I have to feel sorry to the other, another journals that this, this is my problem. Another earlier that work was. This was the communication and later on they have published it. Please, sorry, I feel sorry. I feel sorry from the another journal. So they, these things may be by mistake also. Certain things, you, if you are not aware about certain things, there are, Jessica, perhaps many of you know Hindi also. Suppose you are not at fault in the accident. Another may have hit you. So you have to be very conscious up to the level you can be conscious so that there should not be mistake from your side. Redundant publications, this means publishing many very similar manuscripts based on the same experiment, same combining your results into one very robust paper is more likely to be of interest to selective journals. Suppose you have done, you have published 10 papers. Basically, what is the, these will be considered as, suppose you have collected some data and you have published 
10 papers from that data. They, 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 will, they will not present any research, research result. The good thing will be that combining all the uh, all your research data, you will some you will present one one result. This is these are the findings of my study. So the, the, otherwise these will be considered as redundant publications or slam. This is also called as weak paper that they suspect is a result of slimy, salami slicing, etc. Redundant publications. The research with animals. You do. You should be conscious. You, sometimes you. As a biological researcher, you deal with animals. You should be because you should be you sensitive to those animals also. You you can you should be very sensitive to, to those. Suppose you are conducting research on rats, etc. You should also be you should also follow them. You should follow the moral principles of research with animals also. Research with human subjects. Human subjects can be defined as a living individual or on whom a research investigator obtains data through intervention or interaction with the individual. Ethical guidelines are informed consent that you have to take consent that you, we are making you a part of the study. You are interested or not. You have to take the consent from whom you are taking as a part of your research. Then you have to take a consent from them that he is voluntarily participating into the, you by, not by force, you, he is voluntarily participating into your research project. Respect for person's right to end participation in research at any time, he should, he or she should have right that any time he can say that I would not continue in your research project. Right to safeguard integrity, benefit should higher than the cost, cost your research benefits, it should be beneficial to the society. You, you conduct a you research on human behavior, human subjects, and ultimately your research findings have no not any benefit to the society. Protection from physical, mental, and emotional harm. Access to information regarding research. Protection of privacy and well-being. You have to, if you are doing research with human subjects, you are try to enter into each, their private life, their private information. This, this should not be your behavior. As a researcher, you have to contact the subject and taking the information you have. You have, your role should be as a researcher, not you have to enter into the private life or of the well-being of other persons. So these are the, you, how your behavior, similarly in biomedical research also, because doctors or biomedical researchers are considered to have a very high respect in our society. In that case also, you should have, you should respect the moral principles of research. Suppose they are trusting on you because they are in problem, they are in some medical problem, you are making them subject of your study and you will do research misconduct. This is not an acceptable behavior from your research project. So when you take your research project, it should be, you should be, have to do research registry because there are loads of efforts, funding, time, energy, etc. are involved and even your parents, uh, suppose you are a researcher and your parents are funding you, some agency is funding you, your institution is giving time to you, your guide is also giving time to you. And you are doing the duplicate research. That research, research has already been taken by someone. And the ultimate what you have done, you have done the wastage of everything. So research registry that it should be registered through on some open access websites. Shodh Gangotri is one, you everyone, all of you may have aware about the Shodh Ganga. What is Shodh Ganga? Shodh Ganga is a repository of Indian thesis that whatever research PhD thesis you have completed after Viva, you have to upload that thesis on the Shodh Ganga website. You, your institution, this is mandatory from the UGC to take grants, etc. that you have to sign a, an agreement with the UGC. Your institution have, has to sign an agreement with the UGC that 
after completing this phd project this will be submitted to the shodhganga that is an indian repository of phd thesis maintained by the infilipnet information library network at gandhinagar gujarat so similarly this is an international website international center for academic integrity this also says that research justice and research just this just a minute this also emphasizes that that you have to make the international center for academic integrity this also gives certain other guidelines that you should follow these guidelines while doing the you will having some project in academics or research these are honesty we have discussed all these things trust trust is established in a system where our members are doing their best work the structures and policies are fair and will be treated fairly fairness goes hand in hand with trust every individual should believe that they will be treated fairly and judged by the same standard as all others we have, i have discussed with you respect allows for individuals listening to others suppose you are a researcher your guide doesn't give importance to your importance to you because as a researcher you go to the field and you find you have some observations so your supervisor also should give patient listening to your observations because this is mutual respect you are also part of the research project you should this, there should be mutual respect who are you are not a school kid who who are the participants as a supervisor as a researcher who are all the participants in a research project they should be all be given respect of one another of one another ideas sharing of ideas responsibility means acknowledging your agency and accountability in daily actions and your research suppose you have taken your institute have funded you some agency has funded you you have to show that this is these are the international center for academic integrity have given these guidelines you can search these on internet also these are all the things which are available on internet this is just a this is just a collection collection of certain slides or certain facts you can note certain points and easily can find these things on the internet this is shodh gangotri yeah, your institution can participate into it whenever some synopsis is taken by is some research project as a phd project or some other project is taken by an individual that proposal of that research project can be added into the shodh gangotri this is this shodh gangotri project is just like shodh ganga they there in shodh ganga we add the thesis in shodh gangotri we add the synopsis or the research design for we the we can submit the research proposals into this this is also this web this is also maintained by the infilibnet what is predatory publishing so all we are human beings and you know if if the if certain words if academic this research misconduct has come into this word come into the society it means this research misconduct crime etc these words have formed into the society it means there are certain things although how may we may be an intelligent person also but we may have negative mentality we may have criminal mentality also we may be a mind we have a very sharp mind we may have but but you are you are negative by your behavior you are you want so these the, these things comes under the misconduct and sometimes by knowingly or unknowingly some certain things and things are coming into the society are publishing into the society which are said said as predatory publishing some of the disturbing trends include the emergence of predatory journals which are 8000 plus in numbers with 4 lakh items every year this is not a small number even developed countries also you you can't say that india is also is only doing the predatory publishing you will see oh, it may be percentage may vary that suppose predatory publishing is in 50% in india it may be 20% in us 
predatory publishing is 50% in India, it may be 25% in UK. But uh, you can't say that predatory publishing is not occurring in the developed countries. Everywhere there is there are certain predatory journals are there, which are not quality journals where you will, these are also called fast. You can publish your paper fast into that. You have, you give some money, et cetera, and publish your papers. They owe their existence to a pretty good extent to open access publishing, which has immensely wide, widened the access to the information. These open access has also given boost to these types of things. The predatory journals also are known as pseudo or hijacked journals who publish by charging a huge amount of article processing charges. There are different things. So we will discuss uh, certain things if any journal is taking some charges from you for if, in what context it is taken by, what, are they covered under some policy of that journal or not, or they are taking it for, for publishing your, your journal, which is not up to the quality level. If your research project is not up to the quality, your publication is not up to the quality level and they're publishing the paper by taking money from you, or this is a fees that you have to pay or your institution has to pay as an APC. So your policy, policy of publication should be clear. There are co guidelines have been given, we are discussing them. There are associations like Committee on Publication Ethics, WAIM, Word Association of Medical Editor, OSPA, Open Access. This is also a open access publishers association, open, open access scholarly public, open access, scholarly publish, publishing association. These have given certain guidelines for authors, viewers, and publishers to follow. The Cronium tragedies. What, why we do research must misconduct? We, no, normally 90% of persons are, don't want to do any type of mistake. Generally persons are good. After that also, there are certain things which are happening in the society. What are the reasons these things are happening in the society? These factors are temptation. Temptation means attraction. You will get these things. You will get things easily. You have not to do much hard work. Attraction, rationalization, that you ambition. You are not get, getting promotions. And by doing some publishing work into some predatory journals, you will get your promotions, group and authority pressure, authority pressure that you have, everyone has become pro pro professor in this Punjab university and you, this, you, you, why you are, you are not professor, why you are not associate professor, everyone has completed the PhD, why you have not completed the PhD. So a group and a group and authority pressure, entitlement, some promotion is due, deception, you are deceiving, you want to deceive, incrementalism, you want to go embarrassment and stupid systems. Stupid systems, stupid system we can say some, we can say seven to eight years ago, UGC has given a capping system for promotions that you have to do this much number, that is a quality, not a quality, that was not covering the quality aspect, that was covering the quantity aspect. You should have this much API academic performance indicators. This is not the scenario now. They have now rationalized. They have given better solutions or good solutions. In eight to nine, that, that was called the capping system. You should have these, these numbers of research publications. You should have these numbers of PhDs. You should have these numbers of these things. Ultimately, by doing your hard work, you can't complete that. You can't complete that system for getting your promotions. Ultimately, this we may call it as stupid systems. It has been observed that these are stumbling blocks. Pub peer, this is a website. This is in the field of biomedical sciences. That pub peer is that you have published your paper in Nature. You all know about the Nature. Nature is a very prestigious science magazine, and you have published in the paper Nature or Scientific American, etc. That paper may also be questioned later on. Suppose at the later stage, some experts have found that this data has been 
this this is a research misconduct at that time by that peer review group that was not identified this is a website and that gives that this is in the field of biomedical sciences that this certain papers which are published in very good journals with very high impact factors seven impact factor five impact factor they are also subject to retraction retraction means you have to feel, you have to withdraw that paper from the journal other because later on it was found that even some phd works are also because some times the viewers or sometimes the, the, because knowledge is so much vast that they don't they don't come across that aspect and later on that work that that some research misconduct was found that is that, that pup here noticed that kind of things this is this is also a very recent phenomenon pub peer and retraction watch retraction is also if you will see what is retraction that work of very high very sometimes even i will say that this is research of many many good researchers even after retraction they are getting citations even after retraction they are getting citations many good researchers work has also been retracted have been found that there was some research misconduct into that and these are the guidelines which are these are these guidelines are given by committee on publication ethics directory of open access journals and open access scholarly publishing associations that these guidelines should be followed for as a publication ethics for you will see a nascent research because journals are considered as organs or publications of nascent research we are nascent because we will we see we consider that the research journals publish the new research new research findings so what should these are guidelines a journal name is unique it should be unique it should not give conflict that suppose international journal of humanities you will say that you will give the similar name so that people may get confused and i will give you one example also that there is one, i am speaking from punjab university this punjab university is in chandigarh chandigarh is a union territory what happened a new university has opened mohalli is a you will say very near to uh, to उसको क्या कहते हैं कि दो तीन शहर साथ साथ होते हैं ना जैसे दिल्ली के साथ गाजियाबाद है और नोएडा है वेरी क्लोजिंग टाउन इन मोहाली वेरी क्लोज टू चंडीगढ़ देर इज वन यूनिवर्सिटी दैट इज कॉल्ड एज चंडीगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी दैट इज इन पंजाब पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी इज वेरी ओल्ड बिकॉज कलकत्ता दैट लाहौर पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी वॉज एस्टाब्लिश्ड इन लाहौर लाहौर वॉज कंसिडर्ड एज सेंटर ऑफ लर्निंग इन प्री इंडिपेंडेंस इंडिया लाहौर कलकत्ता वॉज कंसिडर्ड एज सेंटर ऑफ लर्निंग इन दैट रीजन सिमिलरली लाहौर वॉज कंसिडर्ड एज सेंटर ऑफ लर्निंग इन पंजाब पंजाब बिकॉज दीज आर पंजाब रीजन एंड दिस पंजाब रीजन इज नॉट ए स्मॉल रीजन दिस हरियाणा हिमाचल प्रदेश महा पंजाब विच वॉज नाउ देर आर सट मैनी स्टेट फ्रॉम पंजाब हरियाणा पंजाब हिमाचल प्रदेश इवन दिल्ली वाज वाज दिस दिस पार्ट ऑफ ऑफ महा पंजाब सो दिस वाज सेंटर ऑफ लर्निंग ऑफ दिस दिस रीजन एंड कलकत्ता वाज सेंटर ऑफ लर्निंग ऑफ बिकॉज देर आर सटन यू विल सी हाउ द फर्स्ट फर्स्ट यूनिवर्सिटी वाज एस्टेब्लिश्ड इन कलकत्ता मद्रास दिस देर आर थ्री टू फोर यूनिवर्सिटीज विच पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी वॉज द फोर्थ यूनिवर्सिटी एस्टेब्लिश्ड इन एटीन at lahore in pre independence india beside to that there were only three universities kolkata university madras university or bombay university etc so this is a very prestigious university after partition of india the university was the university shifted in chandigarh because lahore go lahore went to pakistan now people get confused you are living in kolkata you get confused that chandigarh university chandigarh university you will definitely think you will see that chandigarh university will be in chandigarh so these are the people will, will play this types of things 
as a part of politics, as a part of academic vehicles, politicians are behind them, or etc. There are a lot many of things. A general name is unique. In, similarly, we can say that it should not be confusing. The website protects users and has, it should have a very good professional website. It should have, the website should give clear information. If, if the website should not copy the content of another journal or publisher's website, the publishing schedule is very clear. This is a quarterly journal. This is a biannual journal. This is an annual journal. So certain, Everything should be clear, preservation of the journal content, how the journal will be archived, archiving content, suppose the journal is all online, how the archives will be available, copyright terms for published content are clear, then your copyright, what are the copyright, who, who will be the copyright owner, licensing information, if as an online, because in the online information, you have only the access to the information, you don't have the, the information is not in physical form with you, licensing information policy should be clear, that you will get after the, you will, suppose you will buy what was one journal for 10 years. After that you start, you not subscribe that journal, but licensing information should be clear that you will get the content of that 10 years, which you have given the, uh, you, you have taken the subscription. These all things should be clear. General practice, publication ethic policies, what are the ethical policies, peer review policy of the journal, charges or registration required for access to articles are clear ki how the general article can be accessed it is an open access there, there are several hybrid models also that if a author pays one time fees to the journal that my article should be because everyone knows that open access gets more citation better visibility etc sometimes what authors do that they give one time fees to the public publisher this is called, called as a hybrid model so if so that, that article, so charges or registration required for access to articles are clear to the readers. What are the publisher's policy regarding the journal? Organization, who are, what are, what, what, is, what is the organization? What is the institute, private or private or public funded? What is, what is behind the publication of that journal? And it, because our, the journal started firstly as the part of the various society publications. Editorial board members are experts in the journal subject area. Review team, editorial member members should be should be very of very high repute. Their affiliation to which institute they belong, whether they belong to some Jadavpur University, Kolkata University, Shanti Niketan, Punjab University, Delhi University. What is their affiliation? Everything should be clear. Journals provide contact information and full editor details so that these these are these are these are their affiliation affiliating institutes. What are their business practices? I, we have discussed any charges relating to manuscripts are clear. Ki, this is this is a permanent every this is a permanent policy of the journal that for publishing an article into this journal, this many charges that will be considered whether your institution will pay or you pay from your research project. Everything should be clear. Journal clearly state all revenue sources because journal publication is not an easy process. You have to peer review it. Some you have to pay the money to peer reviewers also. Viewers also, you have to publish it. You have to publish it into the online forum. You have to maintain the website. You have to maintain the staff. What are your revenue sources? Journals have a transparent advertising policies. Suppose for revenue generation, you have adopted some advertising policy also. So it should be very clear. Marketing to authors is appropriate, targeted and uh, marketing to authors is appropriate, targeted and unobtrusive. So your business practice should be very much clear. A well-known biomedical ethicist stated that when no one is watching, it is the character of the investigator that determines the moral quality. You should not think that who is watching me because you are not a kid that your parents will watch you, your teacher will watch you. You are grown up as a researcher, as a faculty member, as a librarian. Any person who is associated with the higher academic system you don't need to be observed. You do not need not to be under observation of anyone. Generally, university teachers are don't need to put their attendance in the universities because they are under self-observation. If at this stage also you feel you you should you feel that you should be observed, you should be watched, then you are not a 
you are not in higher academic system because the society is expecting from you that i have stated in my earlier in my in the starting of the lecture if the universities will discharge their duties it will be well with the nation and the society researcher must consider research as an integral professional activity and must ethically discharge his research every researcher every super teacher should take research projects and professionally deliver his duties if you are a librarian what are your duties if you are a teacher what are your duties if you are a researcher what are your duties if you are a teacher what are your duties training should be provided in case of deviations this is a training shanti niketan is doing training for you what should be the this is a part of training to you to the researchers this lecture is also part of training to the researchers this that this is research misconduct this is research this is academic honesty this is not honesty this so you should be because in the academics new developments came come from time to time society changes every day so you should need training etc so you should be trained you should, like your you you should your training should be proper this is from my side and they this thanks for giving patient listening to me so uh, thank you sir for your such kind of uh, uh, deliberation so this is the time for the introduction session so may i request to the all participants basically those who are in the online platform please furnish your uh, question directly uh, to uh, dr jivesh bansal sir ji or you may furnish uh, your query through chat box too so may i request to the all participant please response according to your uh, today's uh, deliberation you may ask directly you may directly ask whatever my knowledge sure. i try to give my best part of based on my experiences 22 experiences in the academic system because my lecture was based on many of my experiences in my professional life as a librarian yes, as a librarian i given my content based on my experiences also so if you have any question and i i will try to explain you Yeah. Should I ask one question, Bansal Sir? Uh, yes, yes. Better, yeah. Better, uh, please yeah. proceed. Yeah, uh, uh, Bansal Sir, it's a really nice presentation, and we are thankful to uh, Dr. Saha and uh, Dr. Kausik uh, uh, for these opportunities. And uh, Dr. Bansal, you have mentioned under the principle of research, that sharing of experience. and sharing of ideas and social responsibilities uh, my opinion is there are several research uh, conducted by a beautiful institute uh, like uh, indian social institute then uh, iit and others even even i can mention uh, in kurukshetra university i know professor hanwal uh, he has developed several research project, product but my opinion is one side there are several product and other side lack of use okay so there is a huge there is a huge gap so so uh, you as a library profession what how you can bridge this gap or 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 how this bridge can be minimized uh, your opinion please sir dr majumdar please dr majumdar dr majumdar please introduce yeah. yourself dr majumdar please yeah yeah i am working in national institute under ministry of social justice and empowerment government of india Okay. so we are basically working with persons with disabilities okay thank you dr majumdar for your question i i will try to explain you because basically open access has given a platform that all fund public funded research should be in open access in the usa in the U, in the developed countries the policies are very much clear that all public funded research should be in open access the basic fundamental of open access is that because electronic environment has given us an opportunity that we can put our papers 
journals in open access forum. And this is a policy of the US and several developed countries that all public funded research should be in open access. In no, no, no. India also, if you have all the CSIR journals, Council of Scientific Industrial Research Journals, they are in open access. They are giving, basically, you know, our India, our country is still considered as a developing country, not a developed one. So here the processes are not so much streamlined yet. But in the developed countries, the processes are very streamlined and there are, they, they, they even resist, they, they even resist why the teachers are being so much, because the research is produced, produced by the research, by the teachers or the academicians, it is used by the academicians. Why these publishers are taking so much money from, from us? All the society should be open. All the research should be in public funding. There should be a, I will give you one example. There is one professor in Punjab University, Dinesh Khurana. He also joined Iser Mohalli also. Iser, you know very well, no, Iser is also, perhaps also in Calcutta also, in the Institute of Education Research Center. There was only IISC Bangalore was earlier, and later on there were several Isers are also. One Iser is in Mohalli. Dinesh Khurana is a very good mathematician. He was doing research with some American professor. So he put his, he did some pro work on some problem. He put it in open access repository, ARCC. There is one open access repository in the field of mathematics, mathematics and computer science, ARCC. Someone has questioned that Dr. Khurana, I am also working on the same research project and these are my findings. What Dr. Khurana said, okay, you share your research findings, I will share my research funding findings. And what we will discuss with each other and what will be the final conclusion, we will publish it into the paper of, as a joint paper. So sharing of ideas will give, give more and more associate, collaborations, etc. So these are very, sharing of ideas is a very important in a global society. Until and unless you will not share your ideas. Sometimes you submit a paper and there are certain policies that this paper has a very good collection of data, but the analysis part is we suppose we will provide you one person, but he will be party in your paper. He will be one of the author, but he will give you a very good shape to your paper. This will be considered as a very good publication by sharing your ideas by mutual cooperation that because you have put your all efforts to collect, to collect a data to, is not an easy job. You have done good collection of data, but you are unable to Good, give good analysis by sharing your ideas, by doing collaborations, you can do very good research, very good publications, etc. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. Bandal sir. Actually, another question from uh, chat box uh, available at by Shubham Das, research scholar. Uh, his question is, is there any other thesis uh, depository except South Ganga? And there are many, many others are there and DLS. There are basically this is an Indian repository and maintained by the Philippinet. They, there are there are several others are there. Uh, there are NDL, NDLDS, NDLDS. Just uh, just a minute. Just a minute. There are several others are there. The open access thesis and agitations, ND, NDLDS. There are several, you will, if you go, do, go, go on the Google, you will find several repositories. This is an Indian repository. There is one pro, ProQuest, you have heard about ProQuest thesis and agitation, ProQuest thesis and agitation, but this is, you have to pay for it. Perhaps Shantini Punjab University has access to that. And earlier they, Basically, this archiving of thesis was started from University Microfilm International, California. And this was the first repository of thesis. This is a paid repository. You, this is, you will have 24 pages of access to that repository. And now that, that is also in 
full full access is also given to that this is that that was the first effort and there are several efforts uh, in the open access also and this shod ganga is in this is an indian repository of thesis this is in open shod ganga is in open access another question actually most of the participants they furnish their information for appreciation on today's deliberation not the their observation not the question so may i request uh, if any question available in the floor if anyone have any question i will try my best i will suggest you i can give you you can find them on the internet this you can find the several repositories on the internet which are there so hopefully uh, there are no such kind of my uh, question available in the floor so all are I just am, i am feeling very elated and elevated to deliver lecture to shanti niketan because the shanti niketan yes. is a very prestigious and the name of dr rabindranath tagore is associated yes. with it and recently we have one discussion here on gora 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 is in you know gora is a novel by rabindranath tagore yes and gitanjali these are very famous works i am feeling very uh, i will say that i am very happy that i am delivering my talk i am i try, try to be, deliver from best best and from core of my heart to what whatever i have so now the time for the word of thanks uh, before going to word of thanks may i request uh, uh, as our university line you guys available in the floor now most of you are aware of this university grant commission promotion of academic integrity and prevention of plagiarism in higher education institution regulations 2018 these are available on the internet you can see that what are the ugc regulations on academic integrity and plagiarism what are their what are the guidelines etc you can see them so this is the time for the word of thanks may i request our deputy librarian that are Tapus Kumar Das, in charge of the Bhavana Library, for word of thanks, and with the permission of the chair, uh, uh, that in our university librarian, that is Nimai Chand Shah, uh, he is now uh, engaged in another uh, administrative. Meeting. That's why he is not available at uh, time. So may I request that uh, Das, Tapus Das, please. Uh. <clears throat> uh we assembled here or joined here that vishwavati library is going to organize a national level three day program on the topic research academic skill development program and uh, in blended mode during 17 uh, 18 to 20 july 2023 so you know th this is today is the first day of this program and uh, we can say that vishwavati library network often used uh, open organizes this type of program very frequently at least twice a uh, program in a month we so program is not new to us this type of program is not, but this uh, speaker that is resource person is new we have we will hear the good deliberation of the different renowned resource person of library science uh, professional in this program so <clears throat> so resource person is different from the program uh, in in the seminar but uh, seminar um, program is not new to us so on the behalf of vishwavati library network i take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks to those who are directly and indirectly related to this program and uh, at the outset of this vote of thanks i would like to convey my heartiest and deep regards to our today's resource person dr jibesh uh, bansal deputy librarian of 
Punjab University, Chandigarh. So we are really enlightened by his lecture on the topic research and publication ethics in the context of contemporary issues. And uh, sir, we had an opportunity to hear you on this topic. And uh, really, we are happy and uh, benefited to hear your speech. So thank you very much for, again, one for your informative deliberation. I would also like to express my deep gratitude to Dr. Nimai Chashawa, our university librarian acting for his uh, encouragement and support and guidance for uh, to make the program successful one. So he, we can say he is the key person of this program, all the planning made by him, and also he is the pillar of this program. He contact, he select, and he do everything. Uh, he contact the resource person and also select the resource person and uh, all everything he has done in his own. Uh, so I, we are very much thankful to him for his wholehearted efforts to make the program a uh, success. And also I would be fair in my job if we not, if do not uh, express my gratitude to the participant. Uh, who joined in this program on the physical uh, in the physical mode and also through the uh, online mode? So I am uh, to make this program uh, uh, grand success. So for for the participants, we are we are very much uh, that uh, we are very much thankful to them that we are they are they help us to make this program a grand success. And also we. We express our thanks to the colleagues, Dr. Koshik Ghosh, Dr. Jishnu Shaha, who helped and other persons, other staff members, those help us to make this program uh, very much uh, successful. So once again, I convey my thanks to one and all. Thank you very much. So before going to conclude, uh, our university librarian, Dr. Nivachan Sada is now available uh, in uh, his chamber. So may I request Nimaita uh, for uh, before going to conclude, few, please uh, express few words. You are now in mute. Uh, okay, it's fine. Uh, Dr. Bansal, from core of my heart, I want to extend my deep sense of regards as well as friendship congratulation to you. And I like to seek your future cooperation for the future journey of Vishwarathi Library. And we all are made for each other, you know. So I think your cooperation in future will be help us to enlighten to our academic fraternity as well as our library journey. So thank you very much. And I do solicit your kind support in future. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I am feeling very delighted, sir. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So before going to conclude uh, the announcement for tomorrow's uh, session, tomorrow there is a, another same session in the same venue, in the same link in the same time, uh, digital rights management in IPR regime by Dr. Manish Kumar Bajpai, librarian officiating from Dr. RML National Law University Lucknow. So may I request all the participants, please join tomorrow in usual time in the same link. So thank you, Sir uh, Jibes Bansalji. So you will uh, meet uh, in physical mode very soon at uh, Santiniketan too. Thank, so, thank you. Thank, thank you. Great. Jishnu Mondal, please conclude.